for one, greatness is being sown into you through the word. Y'all get great teaching here. That's a great seed. That's a that's great material to start with. Then y'all get taught and trained through greatness. You get you have great examples before you. You have all the great, and then most importantly, you have the spirit of the great one available to you to live. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Father God. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity just to be breathing. Father God, we thank you because we have the ability to stand right now, Father God, that you didn't take our legs away, that you keep us circulating, Father God, that we have strength in our limbs, that we can just stand and acknowledge you, Father God. You are so good to us, God. You're so awesome to us, God. Hallelujah. Even when we are lackadaisical, even when we are slowful, even when we are we drag our feet. God, hallelujah, we thank you, God. And Lord, we ask you right now, hallelujah, if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose it, reveal it, and remove it, Father God. We pray right now that you forgive us for any sins, Father God. You forgive us for any disobedience, Father God. We, you forgive us for any time that we have walked according to our own lust and our own desires, and we just ignored you, God. Forgive us, Father God. And Lord, help us, Father God, so that we can heal hear clearly from you today so that we can heal, we can grow, and we can become what you have called us and you have destined us to be, Lord. Lord, now we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you open our eyes, that we behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, takes root, grows, and prospers, and produces fruit unto righteousness, Lord. Now I pray that I decrease and you increase. Hide me behind the cross. Speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are going to look at Revelations today. The book of Revelation. If you don't know what that is, it's the last book in the Bible. And we are going to look at Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to be reading verses 3 through 4, I'm sorry, we're going to be reading verses 14 through 20, Revelations 3, 14 through 20, and I want to give you guys full disclosure, we start worship service at 10.30 on Sunday mornings, and God gave me scriptures at 1026. So I want to give you full disclosure that God is yet speaking to me concerning what we are going to talk about on this day. So we all please be with, bear with me. Amen. It's not that I have not prepared. <laughs> it's not that I have not prepared. Revelations. Revelation. 3, verse 14 through 20 reads, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, what thou art neither, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee, hmm, to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. I read into your hearing Revelation 3, 
verses 14 through 21. Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to teach a little bit. You may be seated. I'm going to teach a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit. And we're going to trust the Holy Spirit to just walk with us so that we all understand what God is really trying to teach us and get us today. So in this chapter of Revelation, we see the church of Laodicea being addressed. And we understand that when the book of Revelations refers to a church, it's exposing a behavior or an attitude. And it's using a church, a city, a region that's mentioned in the book of Revelation to illustrate the behaviors and attitudes in a specific way. So when the, the, the passage is referencing this church, we have to look beyond just that physical church, that area, that city, that location, and look at what that church represents and then find ourselves in what's being expressed. And in this particular passage, a lot of times people get so focused on the lukewarm part. Right. And the lukewarm right. part is important because we don't want to be lukewarm. But, but, but um, and, and so the city, why it was lukewarm is because it didn't have a good source of hot water. Mm -hmm. So they had to pipe the hot water in from springs that were outside of the city. But it gives you an illustration of the type of city that this was because they were wealthy enough and they were smart enough to actually have an economy they could put in a piping system back in Bible days. Mm. That's substantial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't live in Bible days. Piping system in Philadelphia is trash right now. Falling apart, sinkholes. So just think about the, the, the magnitude of development that this city had in Bible days. But it's easy to look at that lukewarm statement. But what I want to deal with today is the statement that Jesus makes toward the end about him standing at the door <laughs> and knocking. Because today, I believe that it's time to build divine doorways. It's time to build divine doorways. Now, this town that I'm telling you about, this reference in the scripture, Leodicea, was well known in the ancient world for its wealth. It was well known for its wealth. It had money, right? It was a city that suffered great damage due to an earthquake. There was an earthquake. Now, think, keep this in perspective. When there's natural cat catastrophes today, you got your Hurricane Katrina, you got your earthquakes, you got your wildfires, you got all types of stuff that happens. And a lot of times when these hurricanes and these earthquakes and all these tragic things happen, the globe comes together. They come and they help, they raise money, they send money to help restore those communities, those neighborhoods, those towns, those cities, those countries that were damaged by this natural, um, this natural catastrophe, right? Y'all, we've seen that. We've experienced that on TV. We're, yes. we're conscious of that. This city was so wealthy that they fixed their own stuff without no help. Mm. They didn't need any. They didn't need the United Way. They didn't need the Salvation Army. They didn't need a loan from China. They didn't need America to come and swoop down and save them. They said, we got it. They wrote their own check. You know, they wrote their own check. They were able to. They, that's how that's how prosperous Laodicea was they were able to rebuild themselves in the midst of crisis. Their chief commodities, I want y'all to pay attention, were banking. <laughs> Their chief commodities were banking, and they were also heavily engaged in the textile industry where they sold black wool. They were known for their black wool. I want you to pay attention because the city of, I mean, of what, it, what, what, what the city was known for versus what God says in the focal text about them. Um, Laodicea was also known for its medical school. They had it going on. They were known for their medical school. It created a spike nard for the treatment of ear and eyes. They had an eye salve that they invented, that they discovered that would help people to see and hear better. And that is all the history I'm going to give you about this city right now. That's all the background that I'm going to share and that's all the background that y'all need concerned of what we're going to talk about. Because when we look at our text verse, we look at our focal text rather, verse 18 and 19, they contain some phrasing that I want to lock into 
as a starting point. But before I do, I gotta jump back because Holy Spirit is really just just talking to me. You know, we said Laodicea was known for their mm -mm -mm, for their black wool, right? But then when we look in verse 18, it talks about being um, being, um, have, being clothed in white raiment. I want y'all to play, pay attention about what's going on here. And that they were no, what they were known for was black wool. Mm -hmm. But God wanted them to be clothed in white raiment. Y'all with me right now? Yeah. What they were known for is different than what God wanted them to be known for. Ooh. All right? I, wa I, wa I want y'all to see it because you got to be able to see it. Because if you can't see it, you're not going to understand what God is trying to take us on this day. So verse 18, it also talks about, it, it says, anoint thine eyes with eye salve that they may see. And I love, and, and again, this is just God, this is just God being God. This is God. God, God, God ain't as mysterious as we, 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 we make God more spooky and mysterious than he really is. He says, Anoint their eyes with eye salve that they may see, right? Mm -hmm. And we said that they were known for their medical school, mm -hmm. that they discovered, mm -hmm. they discovered, they created, they invented a salve to help you see. But here God is saying, this is a city mm -hmm. who has the ability to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. But they won't wow. <laughs> heal themselves. Yeah. They won't use their own medicine mm. to see. But they're a city that's known for them. And, 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 and so they have the resources available, but they're refusing to give themselves access mm. to this resource. I know. I see. I see you, brother Ross. I got you. I got you. Cause, 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 cause that, that's exactly the look you're supposed to have. And that, cause, cause to us, I'm like that don't make sense. Right. But remember, this this is this is God speaking, and He's using that city and what they're known for as an illustration to, for a prototypical type of person that He's trying to address. And so, so this made me ask the same question that I see running around in your head. I see that hamster, that hamster on that wheel moving right now. Why would you not want to be able to see? Right. If you had the ability to see, why would you not be? You know, I I, I, I did. I, I can't lie, Brother Holmes. I thought about you. I did. But why would you not want to be able to see? And 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 and, and I and I get it because a lot of times we don't like. Mm. We don't like what we see. I, I did. You know, not to get too detailed, but they came into the church today and they saw some things. They didn't like what they saw. Right. But 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 but. And, and once you see something, you can't unsee it. Okay. Like, you'd be like, oh, man, <laughs> I wish we hadn't seen that. Yeah. A, but, 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 but the important thing is, why would you choose to be blind? Right. Why would you choose to be ignorant to that? Because at least once you see it, uh -huh. you know what you got, mm -hmm. and you can deal with it and address it. But there's a behavior and there's an attitude wow. where people are choosing to oh. be blind. Y'all stick with me. We, 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 we just get started. I, pe pe people often say, I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right? Mm -hmm. People just don't want to know. If, 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 there's a, if there's a subject and, and, and they just be like, I, 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 I don't tell me. I don't show me. I don't want to know. And people don't want to know because they know once they know, they become accountable. Ah, that's they become right. accountable for what they know. So they would rather stay blind and they would rather stay and remain ignorant. Listen to this. They would rather remain ignorant than be responsible. Oh man, come on now. Ooh. Uh -huh. mm, that don't smell good right there. Y'all, we need to move over. We, 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 don't, we don't like that. Step all up in it today. Step up. We would rather stay ignorant then be responsible, right? And that's just where people are. Me, me, me. I'm talking about me now. Raise my hand. I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody else. I'm talking about me. As me. I would rather know what I don't know so that I can make the most informed on, choice now. possible. Right. I would rather know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. So if you know something, and if, if there's something that I have not yet seen and I have not yet heard, I want to, even if it's, even if it don't initially taste good to me, even if it don't initially smell good to me, I'd rather know that food is, oh, I don't want to, yeah, I'm going to get this, something is rotten, it's something ain't right, than to think it's okay and let it damage me later. Uh. <sighs> our eyes, uh -huh. we talk about our eyes, right? Uh -huh. Our eyes, they, they, they wouldn't use the eye salve. Uh -huh. 
Mm-hmm. You know, but our eyes are ways that we become informed, right? Mm-hmm. Our eyes, and I'm getting there because we got to build something today. Our eyes are gateways. Okay. Our eyes are doors. Right. Okay. Our, our eyes are gateways. Our eyes are doors. They're they're the way that information mm-hmm. gains access to your mind. Right. Okay. Yo, you, you, y'all, right now, y'all gaining access. Y'all see my hands moving uh-huh. back and forth. Yeah, my, your mind's the pastor got on the white shirt, the microphone, sneakers, the background. Your mind is, it, yeah. it's, it's a gateway into your brain. If you close your eyes, you don't have the same access. Your ears are still open, and they work as well. They're also doorways. They're also access ways. They function as a means of egress through the medium of perception. Likewise, I said, the ears function in a similar manner. They act as doors, watch this. The eyes and the ears act as doors that influencers gain access to our lives. Mm, Your eyes and your ears Mm -hmm. act as doors. Yes. Mm, Come on now. You see that man, that woman walking down the street? Mm. Influence, your mind goes, Mm -hmm. right? Right. You, you, you driving around, you your eyes see the different prices for gas. Influence. Where my, where where you gonna stop? Yeah. Get, you 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 driving. You you see a patch of ice on the ground. Influence. Right, 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 right. To see. Yeah, come on. You walk outside. Pop, pop, pop. Right. Influence. Right, right. I ain't going that way. Right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Gateways to your mind. To influence your thoughts, your behaviors, and your actions, y'all. Yeah, yeah, because we, we got to build some divine doorways today. We, we, we build in the day. You know, when we started the It's Time to Build um, series, you know, you, when you're building anything, like like when you're really building anything, it, it kind of seems like, you know, we forgot, you know, I get in this place somehow. They need an access way. Even if it's a temporary door, until there's a permanent door, the door is like one of the first things. When you're framing up a building, you don't don't you realize that you don't build walls and then cut a hole out? Right. No, you put the door in place. Then you build the wall around the door with the door included. But 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 we got we got we got to get these divine doorways right so that we can make sure that we have access for the right influencers in our life. Right. All right. So the eyes and the ears, they are doors that allow influencers access to our lives, and influencers come in all shapes, sizes, and flavors, and colors. Mm. Every influencer ain't a good influencer. Right, come on. Right? right? Every influencer ain't a good influence. Every influencer ain't coming with your best interests at heart. A lot, you, mm, okay. So, and, be, and, and we've experienced this. Sometimes your eyes and your ears and your life has allowed you to perceive some things and it has caused you to have a certain type of opinion about a certain type of opinion. All women is this. All men is that. Right. You can't trust. You can't believe. Preachers is this. Churches is that. Mm-hmm. So on and so forth. Pastors is this. So on and so forth. Asian people are like this. Caucasian people are like that. Right. Black people are like this. Hispanic people are like We can go on and on about how just, just not even knowing just what you perceive yeah. has influenced what you believe about any type of situation. And because of our experiences that we have allowed, allowed access through these doors, through our ears and our eyes, we have instead shut down the doors and put up walls. Yeah. Yeah, because cause, 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 cause a lot of people don't want to be hurt. Right. A lot of people don't want to deal with. That's right. A lot of people would rather unsee, not believe, not know. So we just put up walls and barricades in our lives to block and keep everyone out, boundaries. And then in doing so, we trapped ourselves inside. We still need doors. We, you, you, you still need doors and we have to build doors. But not just any doors for everything. But we need to build divine doors for divine access. Mm-hmm. We need to build divine doors for divine access. So, 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 so we're going to deal with it because it's time to build some divine doors. Now, a door is any means of approach, admittance, or access. Mm. It's any gateway marking an entrance <laughs> or exit from one place or state 
to another. So I I, I, I chuckle because you know we talk different under the L. We got a different social dynamic. And some churches that ain't under the L, you got some L type people. <laughs> you may moved out the city, but the city ain't moved out of you. Because I know it's been quite a few times that each and every one of us had to use a window as a door. Yeah. <laughs> okay, y'all. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's why yeah. some of y'all use uh-huh. window windows that weren't your windows. Uh-huh. <laughs> As a door, <laughs> but so 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 I want you to understand that we're talking about the, creating divine entrance ways, divine access to so, because there is a necessity for certain influences to be able to access us, mm-hmm. and, and 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 sometimes because we put up these walls and we don't have windows or doors, the good can't get in either. Mm-hmm. Why? That's what I'm talking about. We're not talking about a physical door. We're talking about a divine doorway. Right, right, right. Um, as stated earlier, as stated earlier, access to our minds is granted through our eyes and ears. It's also grant access is granted through smelling and touch and taste as well, but primarily it's through your eyes and your ears. Think about it. You listen to words and songs, faith comes by hearing. You read a book, you know what I mean? Information. I mean, not just word, I mean, when you're driving. You don't really gotta smell or taste too much to read traffic signs, and you know the. But there's a lot. I don't know. Uber drive. Do you know how much information you're processing when you're driving a car? Like, like you're all the vehicles around you, the weather conditions, the road where you gotta turn, the signs of what the lights mean on the road, what the lights mean on each other's car. Do you know how much? Do you know how magnificent God created us that our brains can process information like that? That's another note. But we're but but that door, your eyes, right? And 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 the, and again, we said it before. The things that gain access to our minds, they have the potential to influence, or mold, or shape, or direct how we think and perceive a given situation. You see somebody out there in the streets, for instance, linked over. You automatically, mm-hmm. you got a whole perception. You got a whole ideal. Sometimes it, and sometimes it's on point, and sometimes a lot of it is not accurate because you don't know how they got to that point. We just make an assumption, we just make an assumption. See, and 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 that perception. Let's 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 dig a little deeper with our eyes and our ears. Music, mm-hmm. television, mm-hmm. movies, the news, mm-hmm. and now social media. They all influence our perception of the world. Depending on the genre you gravitate to, that will store you in one direction or another. <laughs> Some people got a purge from social media because it starts to make them feel a certain type of way. Some of the TV shows that we watch and have shaped and molded us into our belief system just because of the way people have written scripts mm-hmm. or movies. Mm-hmm. Y'all, 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 and, and guess what happens? When you when you when you watch the news, when you when you read a book, when you when you watch a movie, when you when you're on social media looking at shorts or videos or reading comments or memes and everything, do, 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 do you know what doorway is open? Your eyes and your ears, and that stuff is gaining access to your mind, and it's making you think a certain type of way. Why would he do that? Why would he, why why would she say that? Why are they dressed like that? What what's wrong with them? But it's 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 it's, it's influencing us. Yeah. That door. It's influencing us. And one concern is that we, 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 don't, we don't even have a clear definition of where we're trying to go. And so we're distracted by all of those external influences because we don't really know what we're trying to do. We don't really know what we're trying to accomplish. And we don't really know what we're, where we're trying to go. And because we're not on point with the end, we start taking these side trips. We get distracted by the stuff that we are influenced by in the news. We get distracted by the stuff that we're influenced by in society. We get distracted by the stuff that we allow access through our eye gates and our ear gates. That's why it's also important that um, you know we have a vision, a, a mental picture, a mental picture. <laughs> ingrained in your mind so that when you processing and this other information is getting in your doorway it doesn't influence you to the point that you take your focus off of that mental picture that you're destined to conquer and prosper in 
You gotta have a target that you're aiming for, a thing that you see in your mind that you can keep your eyes on and work toward even if something gets in your eye. You ever get something in your eye? Yeah. <laughs> Can't yeah. see, right? Can't see. Can't focus. So what you gotta do? You gotta wipe it, you gotta flush that out. You gotta flush that thing out. Some of us need to flush out our minds from all the stuff that we've yeah. allowed to get into our eyes. We're gonna deal with that too. Um, last week when we were talking about inspecting fruit, we said that there was an eye test as well as a smell test that was implemented because seeing and smelling helps us to get information. Now, there's nothing wrong with getting information. Right. Nothing wrong with asking questions. That's, that's part of our problem, some of us too proud to get information. Some of us too proud to ask for information. Some of us want to act like we know it all and stumble and fumble through life learning from our mistakes. You got to, why why you gotta learn from your mistakes when you can learn from somebody else's mistakes? You ask the questions. You ask the, I don't know about anybody else, but every every mistake that I have made in my life has come with a cost. Every mistake that I have made in my life has come with a cost. Now, if I'm wise, I'll be like, why pay the cost that you've already paid? Mm. I'll learn from your mistake <laughs> and get the wisdom for free. <laughs> but then, that, but that requires for you to have relationships, and that's a whole right, other right, message right. from last week. So if you don't have the relationships, then there's another thing that you don't get the benefit from. You don't get the benefit from what your person in your, your relationship with paid for. Do they hurt and they pain? But it's okay to get information. In John chapter 20, verse 20, when Jesus addressed Thomas because of his doubts concerning his resurrection, Jesus replied, Thomas, because thou hast, watch the language, seen, because mm -hmm. thou hast visually processed that I am the Messiah. I, you see the scars in my hand and the wound in my side. Because you have seen you believe. So the fact is, Thomas wanted to believe. That's what he said. Thomas said, I won't believe until X, Y, and Z. Thomas wanted to believe. So his heart was in the right place. Right. He just had a different criteria for believing than everyone else. See, a lot of us, you know, we're too proud to admit where we are. Mm -hmm. Thomas is like, I want to believe just like y'all. I just can't. I need a little more evidence. I need a little more information. I need to see a little more so that my mind can have the information necessary for me to process it. Mm. So, so many times the problem with us believing is because we can't see. Yeah. Need some eye salve. I'm, I'm, it's okay. It's okay. Y'all with me so far though? Yeah. He wanted, anybody here want to believe? Mm -hmm. Anybody want to believe? Sometimes, sometimes we just got to get a little more information. So, and and and, and we're going to work on developing that divine, building that divine doorway, so that you can get the information that you need with without all of the other stuff blocking you and hindering you from seeing what God wants you to see, because you haven't been able to flush it out with your eyes yet. Mm -hmm. Psalms one nineteen verse eighteen instructs us. <laughs> Psalms 119, 18 instructs us. And it says, y'all heard this before. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold the wondrous things out of thy law. Since y'all wondered where that came from. Now you know. <laughs> We're making y'all see that every week for the last couple of months. And now you know. Oh, he's got his, yes, his praying scripture. Listen, li listen to this. Listen to this. Yeah. This is a request for God to open up a divine doorway. Watch this. So kingdom principles and concepts can have access to our minds and influence our behaviors and lives. Now I know that's what I was doing when, and when I told y'all y'all need to memorize this. You're asking God, Lord, I need you to open up my mind so that I can see what you want me to see. I want you to open up my eyes, Father God, so that we can have a divine tunnel from which information can come down from your kingdom into my mind that can change the course and the direction of my behavior and my character and ultimately my life. Open my eyes so that, because look at the point. Why do I want my eyes open? I don't want my eyes open for this, for any other reasons, but that I may behold the wondrous things in your law. Help me see what's in your word. Help me see beyond letters and punctuation. Open my eyes. And what's the purpose? That I may behold the wondrous things within your law. Just like Thomas said, I want to believe, but I need to see. 
I want to know. Open my eyes, Lord, so I can see. Not only is this statement about access being desired, but also the intent for the divine doorway being open. Who wants to behold the wondrous things in the law, Lord? I want to I want, I want know what... I want to know the wonders that I want. I want to know the mysteries. I want to know the secrets. I want to. I want to unlock the treasures of the gospel. The only way, and God is the key. I have to ask Him. Open my eyes so it can be unlocked to behold it. So, so, so here we go. How many times have you opened the doors of your mind, <laughs> your eyes and ears, only to behold disappointments of life and humanity over and over again? Uh huh. See, see I, I, this, 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 this where I'm, I guess this is where I'm stuck at this morning. How many times we, 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 we open up for the world. We, op we give opportunity to people. We expose ourselves. And we get disappointed. We get let down. We get hurt. And I, maybe just me. Once again, maybe this is just me. Maybe I'm just preaching to myself today. I'm teaching to myself today. But, 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 but. Have you gotten to the point that you've been hurt? That you've been disappointed? That you open up to the world so many times? This is this, 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 this audience I'm preaching to today. That you don't bother to look anymore? Because it's just the same stuff every day. And you don't want to open the door. You don't want to look out the window. You don't want to go outside. You don't want to deal with people. You just want to isolate, eat, sleep. Wash, repeat, what, 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 wash, rinse, repeat. Mm -hmm. Because you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. Because all you deal with, at least from your perception, is the same old mess every day. I want you to know that um, you can't, you can't, you, you can't go about life that way. What happens in those moments is we create a habit of painting life with a broad brush. Covering everyone and everything with the same expectation because of past experiences. We just paint everybody with the broad brush. Mm -hmm. He lying. Right, right. <laughs> she can't be trusted. That's cat. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta throw that in there for the younger crowd. <laughs> but like, like, we just we just we just we just look at everybody and assume. Yeah. And we don't even give people a chance. Mm -hmm. We just keep the door. Every, every time something, we got them ring lights now, we got people, they knock on the door, just look out. You don't even want to deal. You knock on the door nowadays, we don't even look out, we just roll over. Mm -hmm. Just put our head there, just, just go away. Mm -hmm. Don't want to deal. This is what happens when we have been overly exposed and influenced by the world because we left the doors open too long and now we just want to board them up permanently. This is what happens when you have just continued to allow worldly people, worldly situations, worldly activities. You, you, you oversaturated yourself with TV, oversaturated yourself with music, oversaturated yourself with, with, with all of that worldly stuff that you know you thought a little bit wouldn't hurt here, a little bit wouldn't hurt there. The next thing you know, you ain't put your phone down in three hours. You've been on social media just scrolling. You done binge watched the show that you didn't know nothing about five hours ago. <laughs> and all of that stuff is now, you, you, you just oversaturated yourself and then now, and, and, and you oversaturated yourself with people. You oversaturated yourself with relationships. You oversaturated trying to be everybody's friend, trying to help everybody. Oversaturated and now you just like, I can't take it no more. Mm. I just want to go in my room. I want to board them up from the inside. So that nobody can get in. Yeah. And I just want to stay here permanently. You ever been there? Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt that way? Mm -hmm. Where you just don't want to deal with nobody no more? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Matthew 13, verses 13 through 17. Matthew talks about what happens when these access ways these doorways aren't functioning properly. Specifically, verses 14 through 15. Um, Jesus is talking. He says, this is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Verse 14. 
And then the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people heart has grown callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. The doorways are broken because of their hearts being hardened. What causes, uh, they can't understand what they're hearing. They can't understand what they're perceiving. They can't comprehend what has been coming into their eye gates and their ear gates, their doorways, because their hearts have grown callous. What causes a heart to grow callous? Callous means to be made hard or indifferent or sensitive, unsympathetic, uncaring about anything. How do you become that way? How, did, how, how does your heart become hard to your fellow man? How does your heart become um, uncaring or indifferent or insensitive because you're oversaturated with the hatred of the world towards you. You've been hurt so many times. You've been betrayed so many times. You've been disappointed so many times. You've been frustrated so many times because you left the doors open to the wrong type of people and you played the harlot. Ooh. You played the harlot. You didn't learn from your mistakes. You kept making the same mistake over and over again. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'll take that. You didn't learn. You kept getting burned by the fire that you kept playing with and refused to put it down. Oh, it burned me one time. I'm gonna play with it again. Got burned again. And you got burned again. And and, 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 and you refused to put it down. You didn't get burned bad enough. You didn't, you didn't get burned hard enough. You get burned long enough. You refused to put it down. You kept playing the hard enough. And it was your pride and your ego and your vanity. They all contributed to your heart becoming hardened. Because you didn't want to admit you were wrong, even though wrong was the only thing you was producing. You didn't want to admit that it was a mistake. That relationship was a mistake, even though mistakes kept popping up out the ground. You didn't want to admit that the choice was negative, even though negativity was just blossoming in every corner of your being. And then when you got fed up with everybody else, because it was everyone else's fault, you cut everybody else off. Wow. But you left the door open. Wow. Yeah. You left the gate open. Uh -huh. You left that doorway open. Yes. And because everybody came through the door that you just, you, you, you didn't check nobody at the door, now you want to board it up and can't nobody get in. Right. Right. Can't right. nobody get in. Right. 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 And watch this, because we're going we to deal with this, because I'm going to get y'all to get this doorway <laughs> right. Matthew 12, verse 43. Through forty-five, so this this scripture it says when it, when it, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from which I came. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then he goeth, then goeth he and seeketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Watch this, watch this. Watch this. Y'all y'all pay attention. So this is what we do. We got rid of the source of the trauma. You got that man out your life. You got that woman out your life. You got that people out your life. You got that Addiction out your life. You got that substance out your life. Come on now. Like you're not, you're not touching it no more. Come on now. You, 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 you blocked all those websites out of your life. You, you scrubbed them, right? You got all that stuff out of your life, but you never got healed. Mm. You never got delivered. Come you on. never got set free Come because on. you kept focusing on how bad on. that person treated you. Wow. You still kept, you, you closed a physical door, Come but on. in your mind, you still had them there. They were oh. still living with you. They were still residing with you because of you. And you kept focused on how much they hurt you, how much they abused you, how much they used you, how much they took from you, how much you invested in it. You Come never on. got a return Come on, on that investment. Uh -huh. You stay focused right there. So even though you didn't have to look at their stinking face anymore, you saw them running around in your head all the time. Even though you ain't have to hear that voice anymore, you heard them chirping in the memories of your mind. That doorway, that divine doorway, was still wide open to the suggestion. Come on now. Uh huh. Because.
because you swept a physical house clean, but you never allowed the spiritual house to be dealt with. Somehow, after you managed to physically break free from your assailant or your addiction, you barricaded yourself inside and never called 911 to deal with your wounds. You got them out the house, then you pushed the couch up to the door, and you blocked all the windows, and you said, nobody's ever getting in here again, because you were determined never to get hurt like that again, and you denied access to everyone, including the people that signed to help you. See, that's the part, because now you can't trust nobody. Now everybody's the same, there's that broad brush again, because your eyes is dirty, your filter is broken, because you can't see the good in anybody, because of all of the people who you thought were good, but they were wolves in sheep clothing. Wow, wow, come on. You shut down the doorway. We got to build divine doorways because many of you have been laying on a mental, emotional floor, slowly bleeding out. Oh, come on, help me now. You've been laying on the floor, just mentally and emotionally, slowly bleeding out. And there's somebody knocking at the door that can't get in because you have barricaded the doors. It's time for you to build some divine doorways. Yes. You built walls where doors were supposed to be. But divine doorways don't block that easy. There's a mental residue that's lingering inside of you. Hallelujah. There's a mental residue that's lingering inside of you that God wants to show the exit. <laughs> God wants to show that though that negative I hate that negative spirit the exit. I'm not gonna I'm gonna do it right. Come <laughs> on. Many times people who are God sent to help you in a crisis crisis can't gain access to you because you are mentally leaning on the other side of the door Mm. preventing their best efforts to come to your aid. Mm. They're knocking on the door and you're just no, you're going to hurt me again. They're they're, 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 they're pushing them door like we just want to help. You got some aggressive people that really love you. They're kicking the door. They're literally kicking the door and you're leaning up against it. No, no, I don't want to be hurt again. No, no, I don't want to be disappointed again. No, the last time I let somebody in, the last time I trusted somebody, the last time, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. And you back and you got it. Listen, you got to get these divine doorways open because God is trying to send you help. God is trying to send some of you help. (sighs) There are very ones who can help you heal and restore your hope you block out. Yes. Woo, Jesus. Help. Help me out. Maybe not physically. Maybe, 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 maybe you call, oh, I didn't want to just check and see what you do. Mm-hmm. Thumbs up, you know, <laughs> on social media. High in the chat, but you're not really, you're not, you let them in the yard, but you won't let them in the house. Mm. Oh, we could just talk on the porch. We can just talk on the phone. But you, 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 you let them in the outer court, but they ain't getting in the inner court. And ain't no way they're going to see the Holy of Holies. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all not ready for that. Let me go, let me go ahead. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me not take y'all that way. No, 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 no. We, we, you, 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 y'all good with casual acquaintances. Y'all good. You, you, ever, been to, you, have you, ever, you have you ever been to a hospital? Mm-hmm. Like, how much work do they do on you in the waiting room? Wow. Mm. Like, like, like I, I want y'all to understand. You don't get. They, they really don't work on you, but, but until you get at a minimum behind the veil. Right. Oh, y'all, y'all, not, y'all, y'all don't want this work today. <laughs> but when you're just sitting out there, but they don't even come and check your pulse. Right. They, they check your insurance. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. And you sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait. So so how do you think anybody, how do you think God is going to be able to help you? And can you imagine that God is sending people to help you get delivered and set free and they don't ever get access. They never get access. They never get to come through the doorway. You got them sitting on the porch. Wow. <sighs> sitting on the porch of your mind. Mm. Sitting in the front yard of your emotions. <laughs> just parked in the driveway of your mental breakdown because you won't give them access. <sighs> Mentally and emotionally, we get some people have gotten to the point where they won't allow anything people say or do penetrate their 
heart. That's the door closed. Yeah. That's the wall up. That's the room closed, and you can't get healed. Mm. Y'all hear good preaching. Mm. Y'all just walk away. Mm. Y'all act like mm. ain't nobody said nothing to you. Wow. People call to check up on you, mm-hmm. and you just dismiss it because you think they got an angle huh. that they're trying to work. Oh. People just genuinely try to love on you and don't want nothing in return. And you just been busted up so many times, you just can't let them in. You stay hurt. You stay broken. And guess what that does? That keeps that room full of that residue. Yes. That keeps that room full of that residue. And you got to get the room clear of all of that uh-huh. negative, evil, wicked residue. And that requires constant maintenance of the clean space. Did you ever notice that you can have a room in the house yes. that you don't even go in? Yes. You could just not, you cannot touch that room for months. And then you'll go in there and it's dust all over the place. Yes. It's like, where did this residue come from? Yes. Why is there dust? No one comes in here. <laughs> no one touches anything. But there's residue. That's how it is. If you don't maintenance your life, if you don't maintenance your mind, mm-hmm. then that residue, that memory, that you th- that that feeling that you thought you was over that person that you thought was over because you it still be there. Do you know why it's there? Because you don't have the right people helping you to maintain that. The only way to protect yourself from all the negative residue that remains is to allow He who can heal and make you whole have access to your heart. You have to allow he who can heal and make you whole have access to your heart. Not only will he heal you, but he will secure. Watch this part. Not only will he heal you when you give him access. You got to give him access. You got to give him real access. And it's cool. It's cool. I got y'all. Because I know you're like, but I gave, I I thought I'm doing, I I, I think I gave God access to my heart. I, I suppose. I got you. But not only will he deal with all that negative residue on a consistent basis, he will secure the divine doorway. (laughs) <laughs> to defend you against unauthorized influences. Wow. See, a part of the problem is that we keep allowing unauthorized people in because wow. we don't have the right man watching the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, like, watch, watch this. Watch this. Now, now, this is where it gets a little tricksy. This is where it gets a little tricksy because like, this, the focal text is Jesus. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock, right? right? But then John 10, verse 9, John 10, verse 9, I'll give you a second to get there because I know I did you wrong. Oh, I mean... I did get the meth syrup. I did, I did get the scripture like four minutes before we started. So I know our focal text says that, um, you know, he says, I stand at the door and knock. But then John 10, verse 9, Jesus says, I am the door. Think about that for a second. Watch this. Watch this. How is the door knocking at the door? <laughs> How is the door knocking at the door? Ooh, Jesus is a, he's something else, ain't he? He says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. So Jesus is knocking at the door so that he can get access, so that he can prevent access. Listen, <laughs> Jesus, he said, I need you to let me in the door so I can be the door. I need you to give me access to them once I am in place in your life, once I am solidified in your life, once I become a permanent part of your life, a structure in your life. You ain't got to worry about nothing else getting in and out of here because I'm going to check it at the door. I'm going to check it at the door. He says, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. But everything coming in, I'm not going to. And, and, and so, like, 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 this, like, Jesus is the Son. Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Sonship. So when Jesus left, he said, I'm going to send another, a comforter. That's the Holy Spirit. He comes to continue to bear witness to Jesus. I know I'm going kind of fast. But if the Holy Spirit is living inside of you, he's not allowing anything to come inside of you that is not like the Son. Yeah. That is not like the Son. He's going to give you the reference for it. No, 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 no. no. And, and, so, and, and, and a lot of y'all, y- y- y'all don't even realize y'all that Holy Spirit. I'm going to let you know. You you, you got Holy Spirit because when that bad thing comes to tempt you and you have a moment that you don't just say yes and you be like, am I supposed to do that? That's Holy Spirit. Now what you do with that is on you. Mm. You can either grieve or believe. (laughs) You can either grieve the Holy Spirit or you can believe the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. But he's trying to help you deal with that residue. And if you start grieving them and and, 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 and like, like Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's like, I'm protector of the door. He, <laughs> it's like, this is like, club me. Like, I'm a club. Jesus is my doorman. No, 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 no. 
We don't we don't let your kind in here. Come on. We don't let your kind. Here I am, owner of the club. Nah, nah, that's my boy Jesus. Go ahead and let him in. Now you done messed up. Right, right. You right. done messed up. Right. Because Jesus know the protocol. Now Jesus looking at you like, where, where? I don't know why I took this job. <laughs> every, time, every time I try to protect you, you just don't, don't you? But that's what we do. So we 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 we, we, we override. Mm. Mm. We override the authority and the assignment of the Holy Spirit with our free will. That's but that's what makes us unique, y'all. That God gives us free will. He allows it. That but that shows where your whole <sighs> loyalty lies. But He wants to defend your doorway against unauthorized influence. When those spirits try to return that we talked about, they will have to deal with security at the door. Our eyes and our ears are divine access ways to our mind and our hearts. I don't know about anybody else. I just know about me. I can't just look at certain things and be okay. Right. And I can't. I, I like. And, and and sometimes it seems like I like. But sometimes I just be like, you know what? Like, you see, young lady, don't got enough clothes on. Right. Come on. Under the L. Don't got enough. Clothes. Like like I, I'm gonna look away. Right. Yeah. And I'm gonna look away, and it ain't because I got a desire to be with no woman, or it ain't even. It, it's to the point where, like, man, if, if 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 I'm even looking at her just to have a conversation, somebody else sees me, right. be like, right. he saw you looking at her, so and so. I can't, I can't even afford to have that attached to my reputation. But right. there's, but there's, there's a certain level of maturity that I have gotten to that I understand that because of my relationship with the door. Because of my relationship with the door. Got that. Got <laughs> you know what I mean? So my relationship with the door says, no, I don't do that. I'm like, but I don't even want her like that. He's like, yeah, but there's somebody else watching you, uh -huh. son. Uh -huh. There's someone else watching you, son. And if they see you looking, then they're going to think it's okay. Because of my relationship with the door. So if me defends my, if, like, if something could be a, a, a temptation for my son and he sees me doing it, he right. going, come on, as a father, as his mentor, as his guide, mm -hmm. and then my son. If he sees daddy do it, it can't be bad. Right. Mm -hmm. He's learning from my example. So I have to allow God to govern my divine doorway. Mm -hmm. I have to allow God to govern. So I can't listen to everything I want to listen to. I remember, I forget, he, he, didn't, he didn't change up on us. But maybe, I don't know, he changed up. Maybe uh, eight years ago, he said, we can't watch Family Guy anymore. Sorry, Family Guy. You don't get no. He said because the Family Guy has bad words. Uh -huh. Family Guy has bad words. He was playing a video game on Hard Hard Time. Is that was that the, the video game about the prison? Something. It, and, and we were listening to it, and it, just the music playing in the background. I was like, "What they say? What's going?" On? And we got the game. Is using all types of cuss words. It was about prison and people fighting in prison. They had men dressing up like women in prison on this little game on his phone. He's playing. I hope I don't think you really understood everything that was going on. Right. He was like, "Yo, you can't play this game no more." Because it's our job to right. govern the access yeah. ways to him right. mm -hmm. until, you know, he gets to the point where he understands what's right and wrong. But the Holy Spirit is like TSA, man. Mm. You ain't getting on that plane. We're going to run you through this machine. We're going to swipe you down. That's the Holy Spirit. That's his job. So when that, oh, you better, now don't let him in. You, you just let him in with the gun? Right. <laughs> mm. The only way to defend that portal is let the Holy Spirit screen that stuff, y'all. Mm -hmm. And he be screening, and we just, y'all, y'all just be, go ahead, you can go through. That Holy Spirit, that that's that that's not physical sight. You walk by faith, not by sight. When the Holy Spirit trigger you, you walk by faith, not by what you see. They don't look dangerous. You walk by faith, not by sight. Sheep know my voice, another so they will not follow. Walk <laughs> ear gate. Who are you listening to? Are you listening to God about a person? Are you listening to God about a situation? Are you listening to God about an opportunity? Or are you listening to this joker telling you, oh, yeah, make, sell a million records and we're making a dash? Like, what are you listening to? Sorry, I know that was dated. They got it in here. Y'all may not have got it up there. Okay, anyway, let me try to get done here. Whew. Verse 20 of our focal text, Revelation 3 reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. I've been saying all of this to get y'all to this one point. Open the door. Open the door. Let God in. 
let the people who God is sending you in. We talked last week about sign and build relationship. Yeah. We talked about inspecting fruit. You've been watching. You've been seeing. You know who's real. You know who's fake. You know who people who let those people. When you know that people are really about the Father's business, they ain't really. They concern more about pleasing God than they are about being pleasing you. Yeah. You just have to. You just happen to be the beneficiary of their relationship with God. Mm. Let them in. Stop playing, because because they're the ones that God has assigned to help you deal with the residue. Open the door and give them real access to your heart. Open the door and give them real access to your life. I know many of you are thinking, how do I open the door? Yeah, how yeah, do yeah. I build the yeah, divine yeah, yeah. doorway? I got a couple of scriptures that are going to help you build the divine doorway, and then we're going to be done. And I'm going to hit these real quick because it ain't that deep. Psalms 121. Psalms 121. Verse 1 and 2. Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2. I will lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Real simple. Mm -hmm. Stay focused on your help. Mm -hmm. Stop looking at people to save you. Stop looking at people to deliver you. Stop looking at at everything else. Stay focused on the help from above, not the hell all around. Uh, come on now. Look for the help from above. Not not the not the violence in the street, not the wars, not the drugs, not the disease. Not the we 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 look at the hell all around and we just want to go into our shell and hide. You have to look at your help and ignore the hell all around. Your help comes from the Lord. That's Psalms 121, verse 1, 2. How do you build the divine doorway? Job 31, verse 1. Job 31, verse 1. I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? That's the whole thing. But the important part is, Job said, I made a covenant. Man, man, we, we talked, I was, I was on a Facebook live. Make a covenant with yourself. Mm -hmm. Make a covenant with yourself not to entertain stuff that isn't of the kingdom. Purpose in your heart not to intentionally give access to those things that will lead your thoughts down the wrong path. Mm. You know what I mean? Say that again? Yeah. yeah. Purpose in your heart not to intentionally mm. give access to those things that will lead your thoughts down the wrong path. Don't go to Red Tube. Don't go to Pornhub. Right. Like, don't be. Right. Don't, don't 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 go to the drug spot. Don't don't don't, don't go to the liquor store. Right. Wine and spirits. Don't intentionally. Yeah. Don't tease your flesh. Mm. Don't tease your flesh. Come on. Y'all, don't 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 don't. don't what, what we say? You keep going to the barber shop. Get a haircut. <laughs> Get a haircut. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't tease your flesh. Y'all, yeah, yeah, yeah. But my friends are there. Mm. With friends like that, you got enemies to your deliverance. Mm -hmm. With friends like that, you got enemies to your salvation. Mm -hmm. With friends like that, you got enemies to your purpose, to your deliverance. Hallelujah. Don't tease your flesh, y'all. Psalms 101. I'm trying to tell y'all how to build this doorway. Psalms. 101 verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Again, don't entertain the ungodly or accursed ideal. Mm. Don't entertain it. Before I want y'all to understand this sin piece. Before it becomes an action, it starts out an ideal. Before you actually crack him in the head, Brother Ross, you have the thought, I'm going to crack him in his head. Don't entertain him. No, I, I, I love him because he's like, I'm too old for it. He, 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 he vents. <laughs> he vents and he repents. But he don't take it to the point <laughs> where he got. You know, I, but, but that's cool. And listen, listen. I'd rather you just get it out of you than me have to come and get you out. You know what I'm saying? Talk L. You, you, but, but you can't undock. You, you, you start playing around with that thing in your head. You, 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 you let it start living in between your ears for rent free for an amount of time. Then that, 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 that idea becomes an action. You start playing and you start plotting. I tell y'all, man, every time I said, I knew what I was doing. 
Because my I, I had big sins. I, I I tell you all the time. I knew I had to go to the liquor store. I had to go to the spot and score. I had the hotel room. I had to call her up. I had to pick her up. We had to go. Like, 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 like. There was the, I, I, I entertained it. I planned it. I executed the plan. Come on. Come on now. When I had when, when I first had the thought, like, yeah, I should hook up with so and so. I shouldn't even entertain the thought. Right. But right. no, I played with that idea. Scripture tells you, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Listen. We can't we, we can't entertain that. Proverbs 420. Proverbs 420. 420 21. My son, attend my words, incline thy ears, ear gates, to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Focus, focus, focus on the Father. This here passage is hot. He addresses it. He says, my son. It's, if you're a son, you got to listen, trust the instructions of your father. You have to, your, 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 your father is not going to tell you something to hurt you. Your father is not going to tell you something to destroy a good father. He only wants the best for you. You may not understand it yet, but he's preparing you. To be a father someday as well. He said, my son, if you know you're a son, trust the instructions of the father. Visualize what he's speaking into your life. I love, I love being a father, man, because a father is a role that I get to validate and authorize and empower my son. My son may not even understand it yet, but I always am telling them what they can do. I'm always, I'm always pushing them to try different things. I'm always giving. That's why y'all see them up here singing on Sunday and, and reading, and, and 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 I get them to pray and outreach sometimes because I always want to, I always want to encourage him and inspire him to greatness. My other boy, man, whenever whenever it was a holiday, Christmas, he had to buy him a gift. I was buying him stuff for his artwork. I was buying him pencils and and pads to to tell him I believe he he can draw his tail off too. I, I hope you're watching. Keep drawing, boy. But uh, and he's good with computers. Bought him a computer for Christmas one year because I want to always. It, but but that's a, a father. But listen, listen to that person who is always encouraging you. That's my job. That that's my job. Not, not that man says so. That's the job that God gave me when He gave me my son. Uh -huh. That's the, that's my job that God gave me when He when He sent me to people to be a father figure to them. That's my job that He mm -hmm. gave me as, 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 to, to to the lost that don't know a father to to resemble and and show them what fatherhood really looks like in their life if they were mm -hmm. denied it for every reason but there and the bible instructs us when it comes to fathers and sons it says the father has to turn their hearts to the children first and then the children will turn their hearts to the father it doesn't happen the other way around so when you when, when, again when god shows you people who have your best interests at heart even though there's no reason for it he may be sending you a spiritual father Yep. He may be sending you a spiritual mother I to know. love you, to help you, to, 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 to help you mature, Amen. to protect you, and to develop you so that you can become the best version of you that God would have. And, and let me tell you something. When God sends you a spiritual parent, trust me when I tell you, they have all the wisdom and insight and ability that they need to help you become what God wants you to become. Amen. Because God sent you that person. So Amen. why would God not put inside of that person everything that they needed to help you. Yeah. Verse 20 and 21, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. <laughs> stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. Mm. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Look at what happens when you open a door. Look at what happens when you open your eyes to see God for what he really is. When you open your ears to hear him and you don't just push him out because someone told you all preachers are a certain way. When you just don't push him out because someone said that they just want your money or they just want to use you or those priests, they, they abuse this person or that one. When you Look what happens when you open your heart up to God. 
he and you receive his words and you allow him real access into your heart and you allow him to influence your life and you begin to trust him and follow him and let him order your steps and then walk where he tells you to go. Look what happens when we allow Jesus to occupy the throne of our hearts. He will sup with us. He will say, okay, let's sit down at the table and eat. I, 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 I love the, the show Blue Bloods when the family all comes together. Yeah. and they sit Because they have communication. They have relationship. There's genuine care and compassion for what's going on. And it's a lot of opinions, but it's all out of love. Wouldn't you like to just sit down at the dinner table with Jesus? Yes. And he says, I'll suck with you. It doesn't say I'm going to come and rule over you. I'm going to come and boss you around. I'm going to come preach a sermon to you. He says, I just want to fellowship with you. This is what happens when you open the door to Jesus. He wants to have a relationship. And he also says, look at this. Look at this part in verse 21. I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sit down with my father in his throne. So not only does he want to sup with us and fellowship with us and have relationship with us, he says, we will sit with him on his throne. We will rule with him. Oh, y'all, y'all don't know. The only, the, the, the only one type of person sits on a throne, y'all. Yeah. Only one type of person sits on a like like so so when, when you when I start talking about y'all royalty and y'all kings and y'all are like I know what I'm talking about. It's not just me trying to gas your head up like right, another right. preacher. It's not me trying to use pretty words to make you do something or manipulate you to get right. something to me. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Yes. Now, when I let Jesus, when you let Jesus in your heart and yes. you get that relationship with Him, when you yes. can dine with Him and you have covenant with Him, you're gonna rule with Him. There's a reason why Jesus is King of Kings. He has to be king of kings, but in order for him to be king of kings, there's got to be other kings for him to be king over. Y'all don't get it. Y'all, yeah. that, that just, that went right off. And, and, and who are those kings that he's going to be king over? You're the king. You're the king. You're the king. Everybody's a king who allows him to come in. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. The way to sonship is through I am the door. <laughs> It's through the divine doorway of relationship with him. Open your eyes to see Jesus, the son of God. He's knocking. <laughs> Use your ring camera. It's Jesus. Yeah. Open the door. He's the blueprint. He's the eye salve that helps us to see ourselves like we're supposed to. You have access to the resource. Yeah. Don't be like the church of Lacedosia and not use the resource. Let Jesus flush your eyes so that you can see yourself as you're supposed to see yourself as a son of God. Instead of a son of disobedience. We were sons of disobedience until Jesus came. And his blood, hallelujah, washes us. So now we have that white ram that he talked about. Give God the same open invitation and access to your mind that you have given the world all your life. Mm -hmm. And watch the Son of God, the daughter of God, emerge from inside of you. Yes. Fill the divine doorway and get God access. I pray each other breaths. Yeah. Yeah.